So 1.18 has just released, and you guys know how we do it. We will be doing a video on looking over the updates and checking out what's new. And then over the course of, well, between now and the next update, I'll be doing videos on said new features and video series and things like that. So let's get right into it. So the new, the new update holds 190 new features, improvements, and fixes. Since the initial launch, Lumberyard says that they overhauled over 50% of the original code base, meaning there's so much more still to be done, but as the engine stands, it's getting better and better each update. There are three things that Lumberyard highlights on their blog, which is, well, basically three new updates, which is the dynamic vegetation system. So they go on to talk about, so they go on to talk about how vegetation placement can be time consuming, especially for large worlds. So the new dynamic vegetation system allows you to author vegetation that can be procedurally placed and generated at runtime. So that's freaking awesome. Uh, that's definitely more modern than basically what it was doing or basically what we had to use with CryEngine system that we were currently using. Uh, the preview version of this also includes the touch bending feature which enables player characters to manipulate vegetation as they move through it. Ah, so cool. They've implemented a new layer system for the component entities, uh, which I have been requesting for like the last five versions. And then they have what you call fast analysis mode. So the asset processor, as most of you know, processes all of your files at runtime when you say import a character or import a texture or a model or whatever. When you get up to hundreds and thousands of assets, that can really slow down the time that the engine loads when you open up the project. So by enabling fast analysis mode, the asset processor now skips checks on unchanged dependencies, helping you launch Lumberyard faster. All right, so let's see what else is new in the engine. So one feature is the image processing and the texture uh, settings editor where you can specify compression schemes and you can even down res and upscale your textures by size depending on the platform. So if PC you have 2K or 4K textures, you can have that same texture at 1K or 5, uh, 512 for Android and do that all in the same editor instead of having to import different textures. You can do all that inside of the editor. So that's cool. They've added a new component called render to texture which we have been waiting for quite a while and we understood that the engine needed you know it's taking its time because they're they're changing out so much but this is awesome this is something that you would use when you're creating uh rear view mirrors uh security camera screens uh when you're needing to draw a 3d model in the viewport for inventories like say what PUBG does to outfit your character and things like that so this is a very very nice addition to the component uh, entity system. Another feature is allowing you to organize your slices uh, using the new slice favorites feature. This is basically to give you uh, better speed and better hand handling of your most used slices and it gives you basically another window uh, to instantiate and drag from so you can put your most commonly used slices in the world faster. One of the big updates is the updates to the physics system, which I'm very excited about because I do a lot of character-based tutorials, or at least I want to. <laughs> so the physics gem comes with a lot of new functionality. You have the new physics configuration tool uh, where you can do setups for your world settings, uh, also uh, settings for the editor, uh, create collision layers, create collision groups. You can group objects of the same type. Of course, you have the physics collider component we have the new physics ter uh, terrain component, which is gonna be very, very handy. So it allows us to do manipulation and logic based on your objects and characters colliding with the terrain. Now you probably do proper falling, you know, is grounded, things like that, that we can now do with this new component. We now have the physics collision system. Uh, to define collisions between objects, we have the physics materials that also comes with a new editor uh, where if you follow my tutorials or if you're just used to Lumberyard by now, the same window where you create input assets, you can create physics materials and physics library for your materials. 
One of the biggies is the PhysX character gem. So now we have components for a character controller, ragdoll component, uh, even your a debug gem where we can start seeing all of our phys physics objects in the world and using various tools to visualize the variables of every object, memory, timing data. So it's this is a very big update for the physics system and I'm, I can't wait to jump in. The next feature is a buttload of features actually for the Emotion Effects Editor such as Ragdoll, which basically coincides with the physics Ragdoll component inside of the character gym, which will allow you to simulate, you know, um, behavior for hit reactions, character death. If you're not using actual animations, you can do it with the Ragdoll. So that's really cool. You have something like the uh, motion node, which uh, plays motions randomly based on a probability of weight that you specify. So I can see this being used for something like multiple idle animations, multiple deaths and things like that. You can also now have a master animation graph and have other graphs be trickled down from that master graph uh, to sync different things. So like you can do uh, state transitions, uh, state transition parameter actions, which where you can say you have the player who has a weapon and he runs out of ammo and it's it's time for him to go into the state of reloading you can also trickle down to your animation graph for your weapon if it has animations and have it sync the reload animation for the weapon to the reload animation for the player and all that's synced in the same state so when that happens the other one happens there's also been updates to the UI editor tools such as the align tool uh, where you're allowed to align the edges or centers of selected UI elements. Anchor mode, added rulers and guides. Inline image markup, so you can embed images and text strings using text markup. Texture atlases, I think we all know what those are, but basically it, uh, it's compressed textures and it also helps with reducing draw calls. There's been a lot of fixes and improvements for the Lua editors, such as autocomplete, basically like their version of, I think it's IntelliSense, I believe. So it has the whole uh, reflected class, event buses, variables, and all that stuff on autocomplete now. So I'm definitely going to check that out because I've been waiting for that. Uh, little things like the Lua editor not loading your uh, script when you create it or not properly updating the properties window when you're changing out the properties <laughs> inside of the properties table. Uh, those have been fixed. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that because I am actually currently in um, flux with my Lua tutorials, or sorry, in progress with my Lua tutorials. So those have already been completed. So any video after that series is going to be based off 1.18. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But yeah, that is the gist of the update. There's a lot of fixes and improvements that you guys want to probably go over and check out. I will be mentioning a lot of these features as I do video tutorials in the future, so look out for that. But yeah, that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you're excited about the update. What do you feel is missing that you are waiting for to actually dive deep into the engine? I will say that two years ago at GDC, we had 1.8 a week before GDC, and then during GDC, 1.9 dropped. So here we are two years later, 1.18 i'm curious to see if 1.19 drops at gdc probably not don't look forward to it but if it does it'll be really cool but overall this update is really good yeah let me know in the comments uh, how you guys feel about it you know if you have any questions or comments on the engine have any tutorial ideas that you want to see let me know other than that hope you guys are having a very dope day hope you guys are prospering on your projects and until next time, keep developing.